Hey everyone, Reed here. Last Friday was a life highlight. I've wanted to release an album ever since I was a little kid. And now 11 years after I wrote my first song ever, I got to release my debut album, Second Life, and my childhood dream came true. But I'm making this video today because I want to show you even more. I want to take you deeper into the project, show you how it was made, why it was made, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. So when the pandemic started, I was in New York, which on paper was not a good place to be. We were on total lockdown. We had a curfew. You couldn't leave the state. It was nuts, and it really wasn't safe to go anywhere. And I had actually planned to leave New York State and come home mid-March. So I had put in my two weeks for my job, and I had my resignation date already planned. So when I quit, COVID broke out, and I couldn't leave. So I went from being a student, full-time student, with a full-time job, to nothing. All of a sudden, I had nothing to do but stay at home. But this was actually perfect. It was the perfect opportunity for me to make music, and a lot of it. And so I set up a recording studio in my dear friend Brad and Becca's game room, and I got busy. I made a lot of music. I ate in that studio, I slept in that studio. There was a stretch where I didn't leave the house for two weeks because I was so immersed and so driven and happy to make music that I couldn't stop. And it was so liberating. I felt like I was finally walking back into my purpose, doing what I was meant to do. And it was an incredible two and a half months. The time flew right by. And then when I finally lifted my head up for air, I realized I had an album. And who would have thought that a pandemic would have given me the opportunity to turn my dream into a reality? To make that album that I'd always wanted to make, but I'd never have the time or the resources to do. And now I had them. Now let's dive deeper into some of the songs. I instantly knew when I wrote Second Life that it would be the title of the album. It was the perfect title. After so many years of feeling worthless and angry and purposeless and depressed, I was finally free from that. It was my redemption story. I was getting a second life after everything I'd been through. There's a parable in the Bible called the parable of the prodigal son, or the lost son. And it centers around the story of his father and his two sons, specifically the younger one, which is the one I relate to the most. And basically he tells his father that he wants his share of the inheritance and he goes and he squanders it far away from home and the world beats him up pretty badly to the point where he realizes that he'd be better off working for his father as a hired servant than staying out here on his own. And so he returns home expecting his father to be super disappointed in him, but instead his father embraces him and hugs him and, and forgives him and rejoices that he's come back. I relate so much to that younger son. This is his and my redemption story of coming back home, finding our purpose. Second Life is also one of the fastest turnarounds I've ever had on a song. And I went from the first melody to the final mix in two days, which I never do. Usually songs take me a lot longer than that. But this one just poured out of me. I didn't even have to try. I've actually made some TikToks breaking down how I made each song in less than 60 seconds. And so you can actually check that out as well as the music video to Second Life in the description below. Renegade. Renegade was another really, really fast one. Uh, usually when I go into a studio, I'm very type A, I'm very methodical, calculated. I like to know exactly what I'm doing before I even show up and try to track something. But for this song, I took a totally different approach. I just decided to have a good time and just try stuff and not worry about what other people might think of my creative process. And all of a sudden, this bass line emerged and these guitar licks emerged. And the next thing you know, I had a whole song. And none of it was too laborious, it was just effortless and fun. And so I decided to take that same mindset to the cinematography, to the music video, where my buddy Rylan and I literally just made a fiasco of a music video 
in this hotel that I'm filming this video in and just had a great time. And in fact, I will entice you with a snippet of that right here. Check it out. dying laughing uh, about the little TikTok dance that we made where we literally put the camera in the freezer behind me and opened it up and just came up with this thing on the fly. And also my dogs were in my music video, which I was very excited about. Shout out Danny Rambo, y'all are real MVPs. And um, it was, it was, honestly, it was my favorite shoot ever. I loved it. It was so much fun. And you can check out that song and that video in the description. So the majority of this album is more or less a story. Uh, it's basically me sitting and processing, and meditating on things that I'm feeling, specifically towards this one person, but I think there's an overarching theme and message. And I think that's to be totally vulnerable with others and honest with yourself about how you feel. I think it's that simple. Songwriting for me is 100% personal therapy. I don't write songs for anyone but myself. And it's the way I process pretty much everything that happens to me. If something's going on in my life, I'm taking it to the booth and I'm making a song about it. And I am totally cool with my private life kind of being out in the open because I think we're in an age where authenticity is so hard to find and people don't feel like they can be human. They feel like they have to be perfect all the time. And I want to go against that. I want to represent something different than that. And I want to encourage people to be totally real and honest about everything in their life, even the parts that aren't pretty, even the parts that don't make the Instagram highlight reel. Into the fire. Honestly, this one just gets me amped. The vision for this song was to make it feel like a giant musical party. There are so many instruments going on in this song. I guarantee you that every instrument you see behind me was used in this song plus a ton more. So I've got an entire horn section. I actually came through and played the saxophone, uh, multiple different saxophone parts throughout the song. And if you listen closely, you can definitely hear them. Um, I had my friend Brad incorporate this awesome like church organ. He did like some pentatonic action and it was delicious. And um, yeah, I, I hope we took the thing to church, man. I really enjoyed it and it's a super fun song. I wanted the lightheartedness of the lyrics to match the production and uh, that one honestly just makes me smile every time I listen to it so I hope y'all enjoy it as much as I do. So the next song on this album is On 10 and On 10 is probably the most urban project of all of them. Uh, I didn't want to do my entire album with no features so I called up my homie Dom from the Ingenious Collective and he absolutely tore this verse to pieces. I was, I actually had to go back and re-record a part of my verse because I heard his verse when it came in. I was like, shoot, he came to play. So I had to, I had to match him. I actually made the beat in Ableton instead of Logic, which I did the majority of the project production and mixing in. And I felt that that actually helped me come up with something totally different. Sometimes taking yourself out of your comfort zone and trying a new program that's challenging to you results in something great. So I made this beat in Ableton and then I wrote the song pretty quickly and threw it together. And uh, shout out to Dom for doing an incredible job. I'm gonna link Ingenious and Solar Shot stuff right down here. They directed almost all my music videos and uh, you definitely gotta check out their stuff and show them some love because they're incredible. Losing a Friend is one of my favorite songs on this project. It's easily in my top three. Conceptually, I just think it's super relatable and super real. And uh, who hasn't been in a situation like that where you're really good friends with someone, but a part of you wants it to be even more than that. Uh, but you also recognize that by shooting your shot, you could potentially ruin the friendship forever. So I created the song thematically as like the inner turmoil that was going on in my own head, deciding, is it worth it? And I ultimately came to the conclusion that it wasn't. 
towards the end, you'll hear like, uh, there's a lyric, I don't want to lose you, juxtaposed by a lyric, I don't want to be friends. And it's this, this exact inner turmoil, this battleground that's going on in my mind, and I wanted to depict that in this song as best I could. You can listen to that song as well as any of the others by clicking the link in the description, and I hope y'all enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Overthinking is probably also in my top three, and thematically it's pretty similar, but instead of the problem being the friendship, the problem might just be me. Uh, overthinking is, a, is basically about me reflecting on this one night, asking myself if or when I blew it, trying to pinpoint when that moment was, but not being able to, and just overthinking the whole situation. And I think that we all do that with everything. I don't think it's just relational. I think it's, you know, in, amongst friends and family and career and just life in general. We just think too much. And so one thing I really tried to do with the production was not overthink it. Just let it come naturally. And for the most part, it really did. And I'm super happy with how this one turned out. Now we shot the music video for this one in a parking lot in the I think it was the Avon Shopping Center or something at like three o'clock in the morning. So no one was there. We had the whole place to ourselves. It was totally spontaneous and we just went for it. And it turned out to be one of the best videos I think I've ever done. You can watch that video in the link below and I'll tease a little bit of it right here. Who am I to you? Wish I could see you more. I've been up in New York trying to wait this out. When I come home and see your face, I'll still feel the same as I do right now. And ooh, you were sitting shotgun in my mama's Honda. Did you like me by your side? Ooh, I packed all of my clothes. Wait for me to come home. All I need is one more try. Ships in the Night is a final reflection on this sort of mini story. Uh, coming to terms with an outcome that maybe I didn't want, but perhaps I needed. Production-wise, I wanted it to be super bleeding edge, but I also wanted it lyrically to be relatable and honest. And the best way to be relatable is to be honest and vulnerable. And so I kind of told the whole story. One of my favorite lyrics is in this song, uh, throughout the whole project is in this song. And it's, uh, so sail off into the light. Now you're in a good place with a good guy. I'm okay to stay behind. Sometimes you've got to be the night to keep the day alive. So now we're coming up to the end of the album. This final track, this final full song is called Everything. And this one's pretty significant. Uh, up until this point, I had had a super brutal dry spell creatively. I hadn't written anything in months. And to be honest, I was in a really low place in my life. I was down in the dumps. And uh, I took a two week trip to San Antonio and it was the most incredible, God-filled trip ever. That trip lit a fire in my own heart, a reminder that I have a future and that life is gonna be so brilliant and beautiful and you're gonna get a full redo in everything. That just sort of sparked this endless stream of songs and to this day I haven't gone a week without writing a song and it's just the joy is so present in my heart now and I'm so blessed and so thankful. I wrote this song in January towards the end of my San Antonio trip and I actually recorded two different versions of this song. The version that you hear on the album is the full album studio version but I also have a stripped version that's just piano and vocal, and it's how the song originally started. And if you wanna hear that, be sure to let me know in the comments below because it might just be coming your way. And finally, the outro track, The White Winged Dove. Now the reason I called it this was because of the bird that I sampled at the end of the outro track and the beginning of the previous track, Everything. It's a white winged dove. And the reason I chose this bird is because it reminds me of home. Uh, that little call, that oh, 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 I can't really do it well, but uh, that little bird call uh, reminds me of being a child in my backyard jumping on the trampoline. And I remember I, I heard that bird call in like a FaceTime video with my brother and it just all hit me like a truck, like an 18 wheeler. And I knew that I needed to come home. And when I finished this track, 
I looked at my discography and I realized I have an album. I'm ready. I'm ready to go, baby. Let's go back home and let's share this with the world. Musically, I wanted it to feel like very Coldplay, very John Mayer. Uh, I just kind of took everything I grew up listening to and boom, put it in a track. So I'm really excited about that one. And you can listen to the full project in the description below. I also want to give a huge shout out to my friend Brad for laying down some sick drums. I cannot play drums to save my life, but he is a ripper and he recorded those and they just take it to the next level. So thank you so much, Brad. I'm going to link all of his stuff in the description below as well as my friend Rylan, who makes awesome music too and co-starred in my Renegade music video and also filmed it. I hope y'all enjoyed this album even half as much as I enjoyed making it and your support of this project and of me has been overwhelming and I don't feel like I deserve it, but I'm just so grateful and I'm gonna soak in it and I'm gonna love it. And if you had a favorite song on this project, please, please share it in the comments below. If you have any questions about any songs in particular, ask away. I look forward to hearing y'all's thoughts and questions and favorite songs. And thank you again for this second life and I'll see y'all soon.